guys, it's Robin Arzon Crafts. Welcome to my craft room. I was showing off one of my Quilt As You Go pouches that I made recently over on Instagram, and I had a request to do a tutorial on how I made it. Now this one video is gonna take a little bit longer because it does take quite a while to do all this stitching. I'm trying not to skip out on any steps because it was a request, so I will be doing it from start to finish. I am using a time-lapse technique in a few different places, so it won't be as long as it possibly could. I have decided to use mine with some batiks, so I went into that bag of batiks that I purchased, so the bag of scraps, and I've been going ahead and using that. I did have to cut a couple of little pieces here and there, but most of the time I was able to use up just the scraps. Doing this technique, you do have to go back through. I hadn't cleaned up any of the little strings that always tend to pop up. Just like when you're doing a quilt and whatnot, there always tends to be little threads that pop up here and there. So just go ahead and check it afterwards. I wanted to show you two different ways that you could do it. There's many different ways. I went ahead and did a log cabin from the corner on this side, and I did kind of a log cabin here and then just showed you how to do the extras. So let's get to the tutorial. Some of you play with your scraps the same way I do. You just kind of freeform it and you just start with a blank slate and go from there and see what happens. And others of you like to have everything planned out. This project is gonna actually work for both of us. For me, I just grabbed this chunk of batting that I happen to have. I'm gonna need two pieces. I'm gonna have one for the front of the pouch and one for the back of the pouch. I wanted to make a little bit of a larger pouch. So this piece, these two pieces of battings are eight by 11. You can start out with any size you wish, whether you want to have a larger bag or a smaller bag, if maybe you just want to make a little coin purse. I grabbed a zipper that is going to match my scraps a little bit. I am using a variety of batiks, so we'll see how that all works out. If you know you're using, say, all purples or black and white pouch, then go ahead and get your zipper to either match or contrast, depending on what you want. I have this Adobe color, kind of like the Adobe bricks, a little bit of a brown red, red brown. You want to make sure your zipper is at least the size of the batting that you've chosen or larger, depending on what size pouch you want to make. I always like to have mine be a couple inches larger, so I've gone with a larger zipper. So mine's about a 13 or 14 inch zipper. I also have my little basket here full of my batik scraps. I have them in small pieces. I have squares, I have strips, I have large chunks. So I have larger pieces that I can cut. I have smaller pieces that are already cut. If you want, we're going to be sort of doing a altered log cabin. You can do a full size log cabin if you want. I kind of like to do the little log cabin in the center or offset and then just kind of add chunks of fabric over to the side. So whichever way is going to be more appealing to you and however you have your scraps available. So you could cut all of your pieces at say two and a half inch strips and completely work from there. I'm just gonna go ahead and grab out of my little batik bin here, whatever looks good and whatever calls my name, and then I'm gonna stitch it down. I've already also cut two pieces of, I had these two chunks of batiks for my lining. So I have two pieces. They are bigger than I need for my project. I can get this project and then another out of it. Since I don't know the exact size of my finished project, I'm not gonna worry about trimming anything down yet until I finish each side of my pouch. As I said, I do know that I'm gonna use this size of a batting, so I wanna make sure my lining is at least large enough to fit this piece of batting. Off to my side over there, I do have my iron and my pressing mat. I tend to just finger press with this until I actually finish the whole entire pieces, then I give it a good press with my iron. My batting, I'm using 100% cotton. You can use whichever type of batting you'd like to use for your little zipper pouches. This is just my preference. Since my iron won't be going on it until all the fabric is actually stitched down to it, you can go ahead and use any type of batting content you'd like. So you don't have to worry about if you have a polyester, if your iron touches it and it melts it all. You can always use a presser cloth on top and not have to worry about that. My favorite tool actually is just going to be a good pair of scissors because I'm going to be trimming the pieces as I stitch them. I do have my cutting mat off to my left. I have just one of the little small cutting mats, a little rotating one, and my rotary cutter and a small ruler just in case I need to cut down any of the larger pieces down to something smaller. 
if you have any type of a strip saving system going, maybe you have a whole bunch of two and a half or one and a half strips cut, you can go ahead and just grab that bin out and everything will be all nice and cut and lined up square and even for you and you can just use that. I am using a 100% cotton thread because that's the one I prefer. I use the cotton thread from Connecting Threads, the Essentials line. I am just using a brown because I'm just going to use it as a basic neutral. Sometimes my quilting on top will show with this brown thread and other times it won't be noticeable at all. So depending on whether you want your thread and your quilting to show, choose your thread accordingly. Now, as I said, I like to start mine off a little off center and I just happen to have this piece of fabric right here. It is not cut straight or anything like that. It is a little wonky. I can leave it like that or I can straighten it up. Now I could take out my rotary cutter and my mat or I can just go ahead and take my scissors and just give it a little bit of a whack. You know, if I probably just made it a crookeder, then I start. More crooked. So I just trim those little bits off. And now with batik, both sides are basically the same. Batiks tend to be reversible because of the dyeing process. So I can just decide which side I like better. You can determine a top from a bottom from your bag if you're going to be using fabrics that have a directional print. I can just glance over and see what I have and I don't think too many of my batiks are actually a directional, they're just kind of all mixed up. If I decided I had a little flower petal that I wanted to be at the bottom, I can put it over there. But I'm just going to go ahead and start with that. Now you can decide, do you want your first piece to be quilted? The pouch I did last week, I left it to be all puffy and soft so it didn't get all quilted down but I'm gonna go ahead and quilt this one down just to show you guys. You can start at either end, quilt your straight lines over, backwards, but as the pouch is going to be this way, so it's gonna be wider than it's tall, my first piece, I want my stitching to go up and down. You can go side to side if you want, it doesn't matter. I just feel like my first one, I like to have it to be directional of the way the pouch is going to sit. You can decide how wide you want your stitches, how long your stitches are gonna be. Since it's going to be just quilting this down, as you see, I have no backing on it. I'm just quilting it through the batting and the fabric. I'm gonna go ahead and make my stitches just a little bit longer than I normally would. I'm gonna bump mine up to a 3.0, which I normally stitch at a 2.0 or a 2.4. I'm just gonna go ahead and make them just a little bit longer, but not super long. You can do this by hand if you want and do some nice hand stitching. I think I'm going to go ahead, I think the smaller the pouch, I prefer to have my stitches closer together. So if I were making more of a five by seven pouch, I would put the stitching a quarter inch apart. But since I'm doing a bit of a larger pouch, I'm gonna go ahead and do the side of my presser foot, which will give me about three eighths inch apart. I think I'm gonna go ahead and start down the center just to hold my piece down. You could put some pins in if you want, but I'm gonna go ahead and start at the center and then work my way one way, turn my piece and work my way the other. And I'm only gonna do that for this first piece. piece. So just put it under my presser foot. You can go as fast, as slow as you want. You wanna start right at the edge of your fabric and you wanna end right at the edge of your fabric. It's not too bad if you go a little bit over, but there's no sense in starting way out at the edges of your batting anywhere. My machine has an automatic thread cutter. You can cut your thread either automatically with your machine or you can use some scissors. Or you do have the option of spinning your piece around and just sliding over to the next section if you want. I tend to prefer to cut my thread just to make sure I don't have any weird tails going anywhere. I'm gonna trim off of this piece. And I'm just gonna keep continuing. Your lines can be perfectly straight. They can be just a little bit crooked. It's completely up to you on how you want it to look. We're going to be putting another piece 
on all four sides so I don't have to worry about quilting all the way over because if I line myself up here I'm going to be quilting just an eighth of an inch along there and that's going to be hidden underneath the seam allowance anyways so I'm going to skip that part. I can spin my piece or I can just bring it right back. It's not going to, I haven't had any issues with it warping. If you notice you're kind of getting any type of warping because you're going in the same direction all the time, just go ahead and alternate it. I did start with a rather large piece. My piece is about three and a half inches by three. You can start with a smaller piece, but I thought once again with a bigger pouch, let me have a nice focal piece to start with. If your machine has the little knee lift, now is a great time to use it. That way you don't have to constantly keep lifting up the presser foot. Now I do take the time to trim all these threads off because I don't want to worry about them shadowing underneath anything or popping through anywhere. I just use my little snips for that. And then there is my first piece right there. Now you can decide which way you wanna work. This is the way I have my, this is the way it's gonna orientate that this is going to be the top. So I can decide to put my next piece anywhere I would like. And I think since my stitches are already going up and down this way, then I'm gonna to choose to go on one of these lengths here so that my next set of quilting will go more horizontal against the vertical. Because if I put another one here, then I would once again have a vertical lines of my stitching and it's perfectly fine. I just like it to be more known that this is the direction I'm spinning. I just go into my little bin. I can pull out anything I like. I have this nice piece of red here. You can set it down and trim it ahead of time if you want, but I tend to just go ahead and lay it down this one is a little crooked on the end, so I'm gonna go and trim just this edge, straighten it up a little bit. And I'm gonna lay it right sides together. Once again, with my batiks, I don't have to worry. And I'm gonna line up the raw edges right here. Since I am going to be stitching from this end to this end, I think I will go ahead, just flip it this way so that I have my extra length going away from me. So when I spin it like this, now at this point you can decide if you wanna stick with the 3 8 three eighth inch seam allowance or if you wanna switch over to a quarter inch. I'm actually gonna go ahead and switch over to a quarter inch. Just because I like to have a smaller seam here, it doesn't need to be very large so I get more of the fabric to show. And then as I'm going, I may just go ahead and guesstimate more instead of switching back and forth on my stitch length all the time. So I'm going to stitch all the way to the end of my first piece and I'm going to stop there and cut the thread. I do not have to back stitch or anything like that because we're going to constantly be covering it up. If you go a little past it's okay. If you're a little short it's okay because we're going to quilt it down. Then I just take my scissors and I fold the, this fabric over so that I can see where it's gonna lay right here. And if you have it facing you and you're holding it easy, you can just put your blade of scissors right along the edge of this fabric, hold this top piece, and without cutting your batting or anything else, just slip that, slice that piece right off. It's much easier to do when you have it in front of you and you're not trying to do anything awkward. Now, of course, this is a still a long piece. I'm gonna save this. I might wanna go ahead and put it into a little pile to use for the other side so that my two sides don't necessarily have to match, but they will incorporate some of the same fabrics. I just take this and I finger press it. If you're worried about it, you can take it over to your iron and give it a nice little press. I'm not too concerned. Then I'm gonna go ahead and stitch. My first stitch I will put a quarter inch away from the edge. I'm gonna go a quarter inch right away from where the seam is, so where the two fabrics meet and we folded it over. I'm just gonna go ahead and stitch my first line of quilting right there. Now, if changing it around and having different stitch lengths is gonna bother you, I'm just gonna go ahead and do the quarter inch all the way through and we'll leave it at one length and that way we don't have to worry about switching it back and forth. 
So when you get to your project, you can change it up however you want. Choose your stitch length and your seam allowance and let it work for you and your project. Now I did put one stitch beyond where my fabric is and that's okay. One stitch is not gonna harm. If I start it all the way over here, it may cause an issue later on. It's not gonna be, we're gonna put our next piece on here so it's gonna cover it up. But if I chose maybe a light yellow or something, this brown thread might show through. So then I'm gonna line up the side of my presser foot with the line that I just quilted there. And I'm gonna do the same process that I did on that first piece. If you wanna use something other than just straight line quilting, you can go ahead and change it up and use some type of a specialty stitch if you like. Let's go through, trim off any pieces that are hanging off. Okay, now I'm gonna to go to either side here and I think I'm just gonna go ahead and follow this around. I'm gonna go counterclockwise. I don't remember, I think you do log cabins clockwise or something, I don't remember. But since I have something blue here and I have something red here, and as you can see, it's not perfect because this line, the top of it was obviously not as square as the rest of it, but I don't mind that it's a little off. It's okay to be wonky for mine. If yours needs to be exactly straight, make sure all the pieces you put down, you start with an actual square or a rectangle that's equal two and two. You don't wanna have different side lengths and stuff like that if you don't wanna have any type of wonkiness. Now this piece is just a little bit wrinkly. I'm not even gonna worry about taking it over and giving it a press, although I could. I'm just gonna line it up. I can line it up and leave a little bit of that fabric sticking out if I wanna straighten this little seam out here at all. If I put it right lined up with the top of the red, it's not going to match up exactly. Either this green golden piece is off or these two pieces are off. But since I don't mind if it's a little wonky, I'm just gonna line it up so that I don't have any batting show. I don't have, I don't wanna have this fabric be to the edge here where I don't see any of it because then when I flip it over, I can have a piece of white batting popping through. So I don't want that. I wanna make sure that there's not gonna be any white spaces. I just line it up the best I can, and if it goes, like I said, a little over, it's not going to be a problem. And I'm gonna do it from my side here. I'm just gonna lift it up, put my scissors down, and give it a little snip. Save it over in my used pile. If you were worried about the wrinkles, you could have pressed it before, you could press it now. But once I start doing my stitching, it's gonna go ahead and take care of it. Now the piece is going vertical, so it's going up and down. So I'm gonna go ahead and do my stitching up and down. I, I would never really go this way. If you choose to and you wanted to, you could, but you're gonna have all your starts and stops in this fabric here. It's easier to have it in the blank spaces so you don't have to worry about any little, the extra threads we can trim off and you won't have any little bits sticking out anywhere. Once again, I have this extra bit here. I'm just going ahead and leave that. There's no sense wasting my time or my thread. You're gonna use a lot of thread on this project, so make sure you have a good full bobbin. Take any little bits of fabric thread that's hanging off too. And now we're gonna to go to the next piece. I can go ahead instead of, I have these smaller pieces here. Maybe I wanna put a larger piece down at the bottom. I have this blue, but as you see, this blue doesn't fit all the way across. If I really wanted to use this piece and I really, it was like the one I wanted to use, I can cut this in half, put a seam in it, and then use that there. Now I end up doing that a lot when I come to like the last pieces up here. I could put a solid piece of fabric all the way across the top, but sometimes I like to have the difference on the top at least, to have a couple different fabrics like patchwork. 
Sometimes on the bottom, it's nice to have one straight fabric because then it looks like the bottom of a bag and it gives you that idea like that. Even though we're making a flat pouch, it'll still give that semblance of a bottom of a bag. I have this fabric. This is a bit wider and everything. It does come from, let's see, the bottom of this is two and a quarter inches and at the widest point, it's almost three inches. So I am gonna go ahead and cut this and just make it a little bit straighter. While I don't mind wonky, I do would like to have it just to be semi-straight, you know? Another fun thing with the batiks is as you're going through, you can have different colors. So I can have the peaches and the pinks and the reds, and then I have more of the apricot colors down there. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this one for here. This does take a little bit more time, obviously, than just making a patchwork pouch or having just a solid fabric, but I find it very relaxing and enjoyable. And it's really fun. If you had like a quilt and you had just a little bits left over, you can go ahead and use this process and make a pouch that matches your quilt. So if you give away the quilt, but you love the fabrics, you could still have them in a pouch for yourself. Now I'm going to go ahead and put us on a little fast forward and I'm going to stitch all the way around here. And then when we start working on the rest, I'll show you the next section. Now this piece is a little bit larger than my batting and that is fine. I did stop a little bit before the end because we are gonna do about a three H seam allowance all the way around, plus I have to trim it up. As I was going along, I decided to put a piece down here versus to keep following the way I was going because, let me trim these threads. Because what I want to do is I want to go ahead and build off this way, but as I build off that way, I want to use uh, some pieces along the top, as I mentioned, more of a patchwork piecing. That way I can go ahead and save this whole top here. So I went to the bottom and then I'm going to put a piece here. And once again, though, I have to stop and make sure I, that I don't go past this one. And then I'm going to go ahead and build this way. I can build from the top up or I can just build over. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and build to the side this way gonna make sure that I keep pieces that are up to here so that I can just do a thin little strip up there it may be small this way so I might just have to put one full strip of batik but that's fine too because it's just gonna have a fun look to it so now I need a nice piece that goes along here if I want I can take any of these ones I may depending on what you like I can go ahead and put another one of these up here I wouldn't want to put the same exact one next to it but I can grab any of these colors if I wanted to Trying to see what I have in the thin colors, the thin strips first, before I go ahead and cut anything new. Just go ahead and audition it. This is a similar color, but it's different. So I don't mind putting that next to it if I want. That doesn't bother me that much. I do have a thin strip of this that I can add in. Now I'll just bring that color over. And even though it's the same fabric, this is more of the pink end of it, so that'll be good too. So I think I'll go ahead and just use that one. You can use it to go ahead and straighten everything up or to make it a little wonky, all up to you. You can use your kids' old clothes. You can do this with t-shirts because it's such a small bit, you don't have to worry about stabilizing them. Now this piece I chose left me with about a smidge, yeah, it's only about an eighth of an inch of batting left over, and that's okay, because I'll just go ahead and trim that up. And I'll, whatever I decide one pouch is gonna be, I have to make the other one the same size, of course.
and the rest is going to get trimmed even and put into the seam allowance. So I'm going to go ahead and stop there. You can make your pouch square if you want. You can turn this into one of those boxy pouches. We're just going to make a flat zipper one, but it's just going to be the same process on however you do it. So I'm going to leave, as I said, I'm going to leave that up like that, or I could go ahead and put one piece there and then I'll have another one here and that'll settle off my, my want to have the piecing up there, but it's so narrow that I probably won't be able to. So maybe I'll just do that. I have this fun piece, but it has some little chunks taken out of it, but that's okay. Go ahead and use this end. Might want to measure and see how it's going to be. It's going to come almost up to the top. And once again, it's a zigzagged crooked padding. So I will be trimming that up. That's why I haven't made my lining yet because I really don't know the size of my pouch. With my cotton batting, everything lays nice and flat anyways, but if you use something with a little more loft, it's still going to lay flat because of all the quilting we're doing on it. You can use a walking foot if you want. I haven't had any problems with this. Your quilting is so close together and you're doing it in such small pieces that I haven't any, any problems with warping. And if you do, you're just gonna trim it up at the end anyway, right? I'm gonna go ahead and leave this whole section up here unquilted between the zipper and trimming it up and all that. Take these off even though I don't have to because it'll be trimmed, it'll just make it neater. Now we gotta decide, oh, what are we gonna do with this side? Since I did end up putting that top piece on, and this is how I design these. I don't design them ahead of time. I just kind of grab and go and decide what I like. And if you do just like this and that's it, then go ahead, you have one pouch side already done. You can go ahead and stop right there. If you've decided that you're not gonna like what goes on over here, even after we do this whole side, if you decide you don't like it, you can always go ahead and cut it. And if you cut it in half, then you'll have your entire pouch done with both sides. So I am gonna go, maybe I'll go crazy and I'll just go all the way straight to the top and bottom for simplicity's sake. And then I'll piece anything along the way if I want to. I can have just one solid piece of fabric over here. I can decide that that's it, that's all I want. I can put a whole piece over here. You can put a piece of embroidery, a machine or hand embroidery over here and it's just not even quilted, just leave that that, just like that. It's a small project, it doesn't have to be overly quilted. The design options are really unlimited, whatever your imagination wants to go for. But I think I'm gonna stick with narrow strips on this side. I think I am gonna go top to bottom, change my original thought idea completely and just go with thin strips. You don't have to lock yourself in. You can change as you go if that's what you want. So I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward it again. I'm gonna continue adding strips this way. All of my quilting now will be top to bottom like this. Had to stop the time lapse because apparently I was sewing faster than the machine liked and the bobbin got going too fast and the thread got tangled up and you know how it goes, it just happens. I think I wanna use the pink in here so I'm just gonna go ahead and lay this in the center. I don't care if I have to cut this extras off as I'm working with scraps anyway. Scraps create scraps. Did not fix the problem.
And then I'll just trim both ends before I do the quilting parts, no big deal. Now you could just go ahead and sew all of your pieces and then quilt, but I'd be worried about any type of bunching up. So I'm just gonna stick with what I was doing. If you're having problems with having too much of this bunching over into your throat, I do have a very wide area. My neck or throat space is eight inches, so I do have plenty of room, but you could always spin it so that you're going this way. Instead, you don't have to have it all underneath there. You just go ahead and make your quilting line so they're still about a quarter inch apart. Some machines allow you to foot flop your needle, or you can just kind of guess by where it is on the presser foot. There's no sense struggling. Don't make things any harder for yourself than they already could be, even though these are really easy to work on. I have a couple of little cutouts in here, so I'm just gonna watch when I put my last piece on. I'll check to see, it's gonna come close. That's close enough for me. Is this piece wider? This one's a smidge wider, so I'll use this one. I just make sure that anywhere the fabric is cut out and took a little bites out of it is on the outside of my seam allowance, so I don't have to worry about it. Just gonna be a little short. Once again, this is going to be the size that's gonna determine. I'll figure it all out afterwards and just make sure my two pieces are the same size, even if it's smaller than what it is now. Now I'm going to wait before I take this over and trim it all up. I might give it a good press just to see what it looks like. It's not really, it's got maybe a little bit of a bump right here, but that's about it. That's gonna go ahead and press out. Between the batiks and the cotton batting, everything is gonna come out nice. This is what the back is gonna look like. You're gonna have a mess. You can trim up all these threads if you're worried about it. I'm not worried about all the ones in here. The outside ones will get trimmed when I give it a good haircut. And that's it, that is what this one's going to look like. I can go ahead and make another one identical. I can put the starting square over there. I can put it in the center. I can put it down in the corner. Maybe that's what we'll do. We'll make the next one, we'll put it down in the corner. Now, for those of you that have already, now you've seen the parts you needed and you've already made pouches before, you don't need help with the next one. Thank you for hanging out with me. You guys can go ahead and stop watching now. I'm just gonna go ahead and put my starting square in the corner and I'm gonna go ahead and work at it this way. Till I get to a certain point, then I'll probably just have to go back to putting in maybe a larger piece on the side. If you want to go ahead and fast forward and watch it through, I'll probably do most of it at a, a fast forward speed just because you have seen what this looks like. If you have any further questions, go ahead and leave them down below in the comments. I can do a follow up video. I'm going to go ahead and keep making this and I'm going to turn it into a pouch. If you want to come back and see me trimming it, Fast forward to that point, I'll see if I can put a timestamp for you guys down below in the first comment or in the Dropbox or somewhere on the screen, just so you know where to fast forward to. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and do the second one and we're gonna basically do it the same as the first. We have our batting that's about the same size. As I said, I think I'm gonna start with a square on the bottom and because we're gonna be trimming this up, I'm gonna go exaggerate it a little bit. Maybe I want it to be I'll use about a two and a half, three inch square. I'll use this fun runt, this burgundy fabric here. This one is, yes, three and a half. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cut a, cut a two and a half, three inch square out of that. So I went ahead and I cut a for real three inch square. And now what I'm gonna do this time is I'm once again gonna do a bit of a time lapse, but I'm gonna go ahead and cut my logs ahead of time. And I'm gonna go ahead and cut them I'm gonna cut them two and a half inches so that they end up being two inches. 
and that way we can see what it looks like when it's perfectly straight and there's no wonkiness even though overall this one really isn't all that wonky it does have some pieces that aren't quite perfectly even so let me go ahead and cut my pieces and i'll get back to you I had to switch it up a little bit and go with two inch strips because that's what most of my scraps were and I didn't want to cut into all of the larger pieces when I can just go ahead and switch down to two inch and use the smaller ones. I'm going to see if maybe I might be able to have the same color going both ways or I might change it up. Maybe I'll do it every now and then just to see what it looks like but not on the whole thing so that I don't have to worry about running out of long enough strips. I'm going to go ahead and do this again at a time lapse since you guys have already seen it. I'm going to start by quilting this and then I'll work on the rest of them. I have been rearranging my craft room so that I could bring you the videos that you could see while I'm stitching. So I don't have everything quite perfect yet, so bear with me, but we're gonna go ahead and trim up our blocks now. I did decide to do the two inch instead of the two and a half. I went from the corner and I went ahead, I added a couple of the logs so that they are identical. And then because this was one last strip over there, I just added it because you never really know where I'm going to trim it up. I've given it a nice press. I pressed it from both sides. This is what this one looks like. Here's our original. This time I did stick with the quarter inch on the seams, but instead of going with the smaller quarter inch stitching, I did go more towards the half inch or three eighths. It all depends on how I laid my presser foot. So instead of having to change it and constantly manipulate it, I just did my quarter inch right here on my quilting. And then I just found a spot on my, on my presser foot and I just tried to use it all the time. I do have a couple narrower ones and it's got some chunky ones. And I just left it at that because this is really a scrappy project. So it doesn't really, I'm not too concerned with that part of it. Now I already know that my zipper is larger than my pouch. So I can go ahead and just trim it up to whatever size I want now. If you're working to fit something specifically in there or you're using a specific size zipper, you wanna make sure just that your pouch is gonna coordinate and work with whatever it is that you need to. So I am just going to find a spot. I can kind of see the batting down here. Oh, here's a seam right there. So I'm gonna line up just, for me, it just happens to be eight inches. I'm gonna line that up right on that seam. So then I can go ahead and square things up from there. I wanna make sure that I have at least a little bit of fabric sticking out on this side and this side. So when I trim that off, I have a nice square corner there to work off of. Now I can decide what size I want. I think, let's see, we've got all this over here. So I could probably go to 10 and a half inches there. I don't have to go to a specific even number. It could be into the eighths or the sixteenths because I'm just gonna go ahead and lay the other one down with it to match it all up and the same thing with my lining fabric. But it looks like it's going to be 10 and a half by seven and three quarters. And that's a good even number relatively speaking. And now I'm just gonna wanna cut the next pouch at the same one. So I just need to make sure the next one is 10 and a half inches wide and seven and three quarters tall. And if it's not, if the other one ends up being a smaller number for whatever reason, then I'll just go ahead and trim this one down again. You could lay them down together and just see which one 
is what size and go from there because as we did not fill this in all the way so we might not be able to get our ten and a half by seven and three quarters so let's just put our ten and a half by seven and three quarters and see where that lays we should be able to come pretty darn close to that since this side and this side are my main points of contention here that I'm going to, because I, I have the batting that's showing on those two areas, I'm going to go ahead. I will line up. I've got a four inch mark right here that I can line up on. Squish it up as high as I can. I have a little bit of fabric sticking out on this side. And on this. So now let's see if we're going to get our actual measurements out of it. So we need 10 and a half by 7 and 3 quarters. Okay, we're not going to get the 7 and 3 quarters because of some issues up here. So we'll just drop it down to 7 and a half. That's not a problem. So now it's going to be 10 and a half by seven and a half. This just means I have to go back and trim the other one. If I was looking and paying attention as I was talking, I would have done this one first. So then I would have known the, where my parameters were. This one is this point already to this thickness and I have these being longer. So I think I'm going to trim off at the top here or actually technically probably be my bottom i'll we'll put it at seven and a half and then i'll just trim off that little bit because that way it won't make this log any skinnier these will just be a little bit shorter and they're already long anyway so it'll be fine So we have our two pieces, they are now 10 and a half by seven and a half. So now we have to go ahead and make sure our lining is the same size. I'm gonna cut both of them at the same time, cause why not? I'll find a basic area that's about sort of square on the side here. I'm gonna cut it just an eighth past or a smidgen past 10 and a half by seven and a half so that I can go ahead and square up that corner just to make sure sure my fabric I don't have the fabric underneath is not shorter than the fabric on top yes because this isn't a square corner so we'll just go ahead and trim this up whoop Turn that up. Make sure we're keeping our rotary blade right against the ruler so we don't have any more. Oops. Now we know we have this one square corner because we just created it. We know we have this one square corner because we just created it, right? Is this the one? Trying to cut at weird angles is not always good for getting things just right. This is my corner. So I know which one I've got. It's okay, you just make adjustments if you have to. Sometimes when you're looking down at a weird angle, it makes things look like it's not right, but it actually was. I think the other one was correct. It was just the way that the batik was printed and the way I was looking at it. But I've got it all squared up now. So we have our lining, we have our outside, and we have our zippers, our zipper. Now we're just gonna go ahead and make this like we've made any of the other zipper pouches in the back. I'll put up some of my previous tutorials in the iCard. I'm gonna go ahead and just do this as a little bit of a time lapse again for you.
and that's it. You're going to use a lot of thread and you're going to lose a lot of bobbin. So if you maybe have some extra bobbins in, if I'm using a neutral, so if you have other neutrals, if your tension's good, your bobbin thread's not going to come to the top. But if you have something that's scrappy ones with just a little bit left or something similar to what you're using, go ahead and use that in your bobbin because of all the quilting that we're doing, it's going to use up a lot of bobbin thread and a lot of top thread. So you may as well save a little bit wherever you can, right? That's it. Sealed up the bottom with a nice little stitch. Just like a regular zipper pouch, you're just putting in a lot of extra time and using up your scraps and doing a lot of quilting. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. And for those of you that were asking for it, I hope it helps you to understand how to work with the quilt as you go pieces like that. And for those of you that are really not into this, you can either do a patchwork or just use one solid piece of fabric. You don't have to go crazy and use up your scraps like this. I do kind of like the way this turned out on the back. I thought that was kind of neat too. Based on where I put the zipper, I mean, if you're left-handed or right-handed, as a right-handed person, this will be the front. I think this one is a little bit more action-packed and colorful. So you just add your zipper so it opens from left to right. But for the lefties, or you could have used this on the front, this just feels more like a back to me. While I like it, I think it would be more action-packed if it had smaller pieces and maybe just the one and a half inch strips instead of the larger two inch chunks that I was using. Who'd have thought someone would say that two inches was large, right? So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you make any of these, please tag me on Instagram with hashtag RSIslandCrafts. I'd love to come see what you make. Okay, guys, until next time, happy scrapping, and remember to create with scraptitude. Bye.